coffee beans grow by the billions. Seven o'clock in the morning, mom's getting ready. We're going to Venice, about 40 minutes, 30 minutes for her colonoscopy. You can't get cherry soda cuz. <laughs> what do you have to say to the people scared to get colonoscopies? It wasn't bad. The prep was the worst part. The prep? Yeah. Having <laughs> Doctor said they removed one rice-sized polyp from mom's colon. They just cut it out, sent it to the biopsy. But yeah, pretty pretty easy procedure. They're gonna roll her out. I think we're gonna grab some breakfast and I'm gonna go home and upload my video. And doctor's numbers on the corner of that paper too. You still feel groggy from it at no, all? No, uh, uh You just feel normal? Just no, like you got a good sleep? I'm hungry. Oh, that's good. You come up, it's not, when I had my bladder thing, I felt like I was in a bag and I was fighting my, I couldn't really? open my eyes. But this profile was like so this much better? Was, no, yeah, I just, <laughs> they said, you're all done. I didn't even realize was it, uh, that I was over in the recovery place. I thought it was still in the other room. We're gonna go to Bud's restaurant, home They've cooking. Got to fill that quota and the way things are out. Parked outside of the diner. This thing is super cool. It's a moped, but it's electric. It's so fun. Ooh, is that Hurricane Irma? I don't know. It looks like it. Thank yeah. you for breakfast. It was Look, that's Hurricane Irma. Oh, there's Hurricane Ooh, there's Irma right there. Big All right, we're gonna go to the Northport Goodwill. I did not stop by there yesterday on the way home. Uh, we're gonna meet up with somebody that I know through the YouTube, through Facebook. I met up with him once before. His name's Stacy. I'm gonna flank Mr. Stacy. How are you? Doing well. It's this is my mom. Uh, just got here at the bin change craziness. Three bins just got changed. I got a D-Link Extreme N Gigabit router. It's clean, doesn't look like it's ever been used. My mom's got a Keurig 2.0 right there with the box, so that's easy. Keurig is a 2.0 with the screen and it's complete. We'll take this home and test it, make sure it works. Yeah, was the TurboTax in the new bins or in the scraps? You found it in the scraps? It was the scraps. Oh, I love it when that, <laughs> I love it when you find it in the scraps. Yeah. Cool, good finds. Oh, we're gonna get out of here, we're gonna go back to the house. Okay. Good to see you. Thanks yeah, for uh, you. just shooting me a message, letting me know you're coming up here. Yeah. It was good to see you, Stacy. Thanks for the Betamax tape. You look great. You've been working out. You said Herbalife working out and not eating candy bars. You lost 40 pounds. Yeah. Definitely can tell for sure. The Keurig was $1. That's crazy. It's like that. It's like they gave it to me for free. Back at the house, sold this Lego Porsche thing that I found yesterday. Sold it for 35 bucks overnight. That was quick. Chaco Z thongs that I have worn, worn the crap out of these for years. Sold for $30. So. And the Dixit game sold for 25 bucks. Sorry DM students, I was going to mail this to you but it, I, for, I didn't take the listing down after I saw your message and it sold so quickly. Next one I find, you got dibs, all right? Sorry. And it is a perfect fit feeling in this box. It will not get damaged. So we got Goodwill Keurig number one. This one was like $10 and then Goodwill Keurig number two. $1, the $1 Keurig. And it looks like an upgrade. We have a two and a half inch screen and we had a two inch screen over here. Bigger reservoir. We're gonna clean it up, see if it works. We have that piece preemptively to see what we get out of it. Got a couple grounds, not too bad. It probably wasn't clogged. This is the one I found when mom first said she wanted a Keurig. So I found the Cuisinart Keurig. A one cup use. And then I found this one the other day, probably two or three weeks ago. And then we just found this one today. I'm gonna do coffee, I was gonna run it through plain. Just to see if it works. Yeah, who knows what Let's might see. be living Oh, it dispense hot water. Yes, please. No, it's, it's hot, though. No, it's not. Just got a piston in the mail so we can do the lower piston brake rebuild or whatever on the scooter. No scoring at all. $20. Maybe I'll order two of these if I uh, still get a little bit of the leak from the other one. Betamax goes in Vintage Media for testing. Thank you very much, Stacy. So we're replacing this lower piston right here that we replaced the other day, but it's scored. So we're gonna get this bad boy off. It's only two bolts. It's super easy to get off. I've been into this brake caliper so many times. Two bolts and then the caliper comes off and now I can actually inspect it for drippage. This is what I was trying to explain before that I used one of the old pads, one of the new pads, and it lets the pistons express a little bit, but it looks like one of the pistons is not even 
clamped out all the way. This bottom one is the pitted one that's worse. That's the one we're gonna replace. And hopefully that takes care of the uh, leaking issue. I don't see any brake fluid coming from the top piston, but that bottom one, you see that, that uh, spot of brake fluid right there? That will have to, uh, that's what's gonna hopefully be fixed. 10 millimeter to the locking plate. That comes right off, slides. These should come out pretty easily because I put anti-seize on them last time. I actually had to like pound these out last time. That's very nice. And the brake pads slide right out. Now we're going to pump the brakes to fully extend that piston. I really hope I didn't damage the seal though. That's what I that's what I hope I didn't do is damage that seal in there. We'll pump the brakes to extend the pistons. We're extended all the way. And this is when we literally just pull out the old piston and put in the new piston. So we're gonna take out the old piston. There that goes. I guess I won't know if the seals are destroyed until I put this piston in. Cool, that was, that was easy. Now we got a brand spanking new piston in there. Uh, we will now press both pistons all the way in, slowly clean up any excess. And now I'm gonna install both brand new pads. Ew. Now we're going to install both brand new pads instead of just the one. And now I'm gonna pump the brakes until they get tight and they're not getting tight, which means that there's air in it somewhere from replacing the piston. So I'm gonna get mom to help me lead the air out of the brakes. And squeeze. It went real easy. Yeah, it will until the air gets out of it. And release and release and pump it a couple times. Is it still really easy? Is it still really easy? Yeah, it's still easy. But now the new piston's on the right, the old piston, but the better piston's on the left. Let's press, pump the brakes, Mom. You can see the bubbles coming out there, the small amount of brake fluid gonna be leaking out of that piston under pressure. So I'm going to order just another piston, replace both of the pistons, and scrap trying to use the old pitted pistons, which is probably what I should have done in the first place but it was worth the learning experience. The uh, new piston's now not leaking at all. So we'll eventually have two spanking new pistons and then two spanking new brake pads, which will make this like a spanking new caliper. While I was wrenching, I nicked myself pretty good. So lesson learned when you rebuild a brake, just get new pistons if they're pitted beyond belief instead of wasting time trying to polish them, especially when they're only 20 bucks a piston. I'm just gonna go order another one right now. It'll be here in a couple days, then we'll repeat the process. I'm cruising Craigslist just looking at the Honda Helixes. Here's another 87, this one's $1,600. Very clean, about the same amount of miles as mine, but it has this amazing looking rear trunk. Paid 1,200 for mine, but this one looks a lot cleaner. It's got the high windshield as well. Very cool bike. This is amazing. This one has an original Honda sidecar. $2,600, if my motorcycle broke tomorrow, I would be negotiating with this guy right here. This is amazing. I've never seen a sidecar. This is so cool. I'm gonna drain the coolant on this Honda Helix. The radiator's up here, so I intuitively thought I'd have to like get up under here, so I started taking cowlings off and undoing screws. And then there were two screws right here. I'm like, man, what a poor design, Honda. Well, it turns out that you access the radiator cap from three simple screws on the dash. And it's all coming back to me now. I remember I have done this before. That's where you fill it, the radiator's in the front, and then the drain bolt is down here. Right there, I think, is the drain bolt. And then we're gonna drain the fluid out, look at it, and then uh, wash it out a couple times with water and then put in new fluid. Even if I have changed this, it's probably been two years since I've changed it, but I do remember doing this now. And there's a coolant reservoir tank right here. I'm gonna clean that out. That thing looks funky on the inside. I don't think it's ever been cleaned. There's a screw on the top, 10 millimeter. I have to just very patiently twist, get a quarter of a turn on it, an eighth of a turn on it, every single turn to try to get back it out. And there's also an easier to get to bolt here. You do have to take two plastic panels off on the bottom, but the screws are just Phillips on the outside. 
Have you ever heard the phrase, if it's not broke, don't fix it? Well, this wasn't broke, but it probably should have been cleaned out at some point in its life. Not 100% necessary, but I wanted to. And upon removal, I, I broke this um, rubber hose that's 30 years old that goes from the radiator to that. So that is going to be an absolute nightmare to replace. What I should have done is disconnected it up here to whichever one is the overflow and then I could have just pulled it out rather than trying to finagle it where I couldn't reach, which was here, and it eventually broke the linkage. Oh, it's not broken, okay. It was just, uh, it was just pressed in there. Okay, we can, we're good. I thought this was a hose that went in here and it's actually just a uh, plastic housing that pushes in a little clamp, clamps onto it. So we don't have to order a new piece, that's good. Now let's clean this out. I have uh, been brushing it with a toothbrush. Marble's in there with a little bit of CLR soap and water. Help clean that out. It is funky. Is it 100%? No, but it is like a lot better than it was. And I'm not gonna do this for another 30 years, so yeah. I keep flushing the system with just water. Draining, filling, closing, running draining i've done it twice and i'm waiting for the water to come out clear and then uh put some coolant in her all right i would not recommend anyone remove this reservoir just because that 10 millimeter bolt right there is complete 10 millimeter hell to get back in it was not easy so maybe just skip that part if i ever make a coolant flush honda helix video in the future skip that part after about three water flushes this is what we're getting out pretty clear looking not 100% water, but uh, a lot better. That's our uh, trash coolant. And we are doing the final fill with coolant. And it doesn't take a whole lot, just about a quart and a half, a quart and a quarter, a quart and a half, something like that. A quart and a quarter, I think. And uh, filled her up, brand spanking new coolant. And I don't gotta do that for another two years. While I was working on my bike, I just figured this function of the bike out. No lie, I've never used this in the, I think, three years I've had this bike. There's a parking brake lock here. I always thought this was broken because I would pull on it and nothing would happen. But I had an epiphany is that I saw when I was in there that it was kind of linked. I could kind of see and feel that it was linked to this back brake. So I press this down really hard. I pull that in and it clicks, locks, my front brake is all the way depressed and it locks my rear wheel. It doesn't move at all. So if somebody doesn't know how to work the, the brake lock, they can't take the bike. They couldn't steal the bike. And if I'm on a hill, I can park it. I love this bike even more now. And to undo it, I press this little actuator, push it down, press on the brake really hard it clicks and then a complete mechanical parking brake function that i did not know existed the honda helix is awesome and what better way to celebrate scooter work than taking the scooter to autozone i'm gonna pick up the half inch breaker bar torque wrench so i can try to torque my axle nuts down to spec and then get a pulley holder if they have one so i can hold my pulley and torque that down to spec um on this bike, I did order that other piston. It should be here in a couple of days. We'll do that in a couple of days. I was getting some backfire on deceleration and some shuddering at low speeds uh, during takeoff. I know exactly what the problem is with the shuddering. My centrifugal clutch pads become glazed. I'm gonna have to deglaze them, which means basically sanding them down a little bit, or I can install a new centrifugal clutch pads. I have them at the house from uh, earlier when I was messing with the clutch. So we'll do that in a few. Lots of wrenching today. Thanks to everyone for hanging out with me. If you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up. If you have any encouraging comments, I'd love to hear them. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow is the big family engagement party. Uh, should be crazy. I don't know how much of it I'm gonna film and how much of Rachel's family I'm gonna shove the camera in their face. We'll see. Uh, anyways, I will talk to you guys in the morning. Bye.